Welcome to Common Prophets. Today we will discuss the genetics of the Exodus. We are all familiar that around 1500 BC, according to the Bible, the Jews left a place called Mitzrayim for Israel, led by Moses. The conventional view is that Moses led this Exodus from Egypt to Israel. But we have been proposing that such was not the case and Moses actually led the exodus from the Indus Valley or India to Israel. The Bible does not mention Egypt at all. Bible mentions a place named Mitzrayim from where the exodus took place. Whether this Mitzrayim was located in Egypt or India has to be decided based upon evidence. It cannot be assumed that Mitzrayim is either Egypt or India. After the exodus, in the 10th century, King Solomon built the first temple. Now this temple was destroyed in 586 BCE and after its destruction, the Jews were taken to Babylon and where they were enslaved. After King Cyrus came to power, he allowed the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. But at this time, many of the Jews did not return to Jerusalem they decided to go to other places. Among the places, one place was India. And some of the Jews from Babylon, they appeared to have come back to India from where they had originally started. But they had forgotten their original roots in India by this time. So to them, the India was a new place where they had come. Abraham Ben-Hur has tracked the cemeteries of the Jews from Israel to India. And you can see these pictures from, uh, he calls these dolmens. These dolmens were there in Golan Heights in Israel, then in southern Russia, then in Sindh, and then in central India in Rachi in Jharkhand. He gives a number of other photos throughout the route, but I am giving only the four prominent ones here. So, the picture is around 1406 BCE, the Jews left India for Israel. Around 586, they came back to Babylon after the first temple was destroyed. And then after Babylon, some returned back to Israel and others spread across the world and some came back to India. So there are two migrations, out of India and back to India. This causes a lot of confusion that we shall see shortly. Now the central point is that there is a gene called R2. Now this gene is found in about 10% of Indian people and it is found in 1% of Ashkenazi Jews. The Ashkenazi constitute about 80% of all Jews. So we can say that it is about 1% of all Jews. So the key question is, from where do the Jews inherit this R2 gene, which is very specific to India? Sahu, in a study of 2006, points out that the R1A gene, which is similar to R2 gene, is concentrated very much in central India. And as one goes west, the color you can see in this slide becomes lighter and lighter green, which indicates lesser percentage of R1A or R2 genes. So R1A or R2 are focused or centered in India. There is a lot of other evidence that the R2 gene is focused on India. Sen Gupta in a study of 2006 says that its ancestry is in Asian subcontinent. Zhao in a 2009 study says that various castes and religious groups in India showed R2 genes. Chenna Krishnaya in a 2011 study shows that Lingayats and Vokkaligas of Karnataka have this R2 gene. And Shinde in 2019 has checked the genes of a skeleton from the Indus Valley and he says that there is no evidence of any mid-eastern genes. So all these studies very clearly say that R2 is indigenous to India and R2 original home is in India. Now there was a study done of 121 Jewish people and 1166 non-Jewish people. And it was found that in Israel, the Jewish 
samples overlay the non-Jewish samples, which means that in Israel, the people have a basic non-Jewish inheritance and over which the Jewish inheritance has come. So this makes sense because if the exodus took place from another place to Israel, so the people of Israel had their original genes and over those the genes of the Jews were found. So there are two layers of genes. One is the original Israeli genes which may be Canaanite or whatever and then there are the Jewish genes which are overlying on the top. Now the very interesting part is that the same study says that the Jews in India their genes do not overlie the Indian genes. Now please try to understand this. The Jews went on an exodus and when they reached Israel their genes overlay the genes of the Israeli people there. But when those same people came back to India, as I have shown earlier, the first temple was destroyed and after they migrated all over the world through, from Babylon. So when some of them came back to India, their genes do not overlie the Indian genes. So that means that they have the same genes as the Indians. Now how is that possible? Because if the Jews had come from Egypt to Israel, from Israel to Babylon and from Babylon to India, then the Egyptian genes should overlie that of Indian genes. But the studies show that the genes of the Indian Jews are same as the genes of the Indian people. And there is no layering of the genes, which indicates the Indian Jews were actually returning Jews. They had the Indian genes. These genes went with them to Israel in 1406 BC. They came back to 586 BC to Babylon and then they came back to India. So as a result, because it is like returning home, therefore there is no difference in the genes. Now the question still remains, why should we focus on R2 genes which is found only in 1% of the Jews? In this chart, we can see that if we start from the 10% Jews in India, only in four generations, if they marry with non-Jewish people, only in four generations, the percentage of R2 gene will come from 10% to 5, then to 2.5 and then 1.2% genes. So against these four generations, let us see how many generations it has been since the exodus. The exodus took place in 1500 BC, present time is 2000 CE. So there are 3500 years time from the exodus to present. And if we have to take 25 years per generation, that means there have been 140 generations between the exodus and now. Now out of these 140 generations, if only there was intermarriage in four, then we would have 1% genes. If there was lot more intermarriage, then the genes would become much lesser percentage. So the fact that there is 1% gene is quite significant because it shows that out of 140 generations, there were only 4 generations of intermarriage and that 4 generations led to the reduction of the gene from 10% to 1%. Another study by Kailuso tells that the R2 gene in India is 10%. In Pakistan, it is 7 to 8 percent. In Tajikistan, it is 6 percent. And then he says that it is single digit in other countries. And lastly, we can compare this with 1 percent in Israel. So we can see a declining tendency of R2 gene as we move out of India. This means that the R2 gene that we see in 1 percent of the Jews could very much be from the Indian origins of the Jews. Kailosov did another study. He took 39 samples out of which 17 were Jewish and 22 were non-Jewish and he made a study of their genes. Based upon their study, he concluded that these 39 people had a common ancestor at 6200 years before present or 4000 BCE. This is approximately the date of Adam according to the Bible. Then he says that within the 17 Jewish samples, the common ancestor was only 4000 before present 
or about 2000 BC. Now this is exactly the time of Abraham. So what it means is that the common ancestor of the Jews lived in Indus Valley at 6200 years before today. From there the evolution continued. Around 4000 years from present there arose Abraham uh, and Abraham's descendants became the 17 Jewish samples. So this story aligns perfectly with the biblical story although there may be other interpretations but at least this much is clear. Kylosov also says that there is a six marker gene. Our gene is a very long string of markers and out of which he says a particular section of six marker is common to all the 39 Jews and it is also common to almost all the Indians. This six marker, this is called haplotype. This six marker haplotype is common to all the Jews and all the Indians and which indicates that there is a clear affinity. Now to conclude, we have to keep one thing in mind that migration from India was not one-sided, it was a two-sided migration. First, the Jews went out from India, then some of them came back to India and the, those who came back formed the Jewish communities in Cochin, Mumbai and other places in India. Secondly, the R2 haplogroup is very prominent in India and it is found in 1% of the Jews. Thirdly, this 1% indicates that this is a declining tendency from India's 10% to Jews 1% and the marker haplotype also indicates a common ancestry between the Jews and the Indians. So there is considerable evidence that the Jews may have their origins in India and that is why we find so much affinity between the haplogroups of Indians and the Jews. As we sir studies six gene concept of similarity between Indians and Jews, do we have any other foreign sources about this concept or only Indian sources? This study was done by Anatol Kailosov, who is a Russian author and who has done uh, studies of genetic structure of people across the world. So this is not an Indian study, this is a um, Russian study. Sir, what is the reason that the facial features and physical features of Indians and Jews are not same? They are not look like us. The reason why they are not looking similar is because the 9% genes that they have inherited from other people, those are dominating in physical feature. So although the physical features are western, but the tail or some element of Indian genes are still being found in them. Sir, so apart from genes, do we have some similar connection with Jews and Indian people in cultural or traditional way? We have many similarities of culture. First, Jacob poured oil on stone. That is exactly what we do in terms of pouring oil on shivling. Aaron made a calf of gold. That is same as Nandi. So like that, there are many similarities which we need not go into detail here. But there are many similarities of culture. I have another video in which I have detailed the cultural similarities. If you want, you may kindly click on this link and you can go on to that video and see the cultural similarities. Thank you. I hope you like the video. Please do not forget to like and share this video. And please note that the references I have given in this video uh, you can find the full references in the description and we are happy to receive your critical comments for which we shall be ever grateful. Thank you and I hope to see you again.